so this is going to be a video about episode 10 of How to Get Away with Murder 6 season. What? What do you mean the show's not going to be back until April 2nd? What the hell am I supposed to talk about? So this is going to be a video about... Wes. Okay, so if you haven't seen the 2019 fall finale of How to Get Away with the Murder, I would suggest watching that first, because this video will contain spoilers. And with that disclaimer out of the way, we're going to talk about how the hell Wes appeared at the end of this fall premiere. But before we get started, thank you for watching. I do release new content weekly, so hit subscribe and that thumbs up to see more videos like this one. I also do like to feature my favorite or most interesting top three theories from the comment section of my last video, and then feature them at the end of this video here. So be sure to stick around for that, and then don't forget to comment and let me know what you think about the season of How to Get Away with Murder. Anyway, let's get started and talk some West speculation. The way I see it, and the way that you see it too based off of your comments, there's three explanations for this surprise West reveal. But there's also a fourth that I think is possible, and I'm gonna introduce that one later at the end. And just be prepared, cause it's a little crazy. Also be aware that this is strictly a West video, so I'm not gonna really be talking about Asher, Gabriel, Annalise, or Laurel in any extreme detail, unless it does pertain to West somehow. Get it? Got it? Great. Here we go. Explanation one, and perhaps the most obvious and easiest to believe, is that the ending scene is a vision or dream of sorts. Similar to the first episode of season six, where Annalise kind of pictures her funeral and who would attend. Annalise could be living her best life in the Bahamas or something, and then have this vision of her funeral again. And then after hearing what imaginary dead or alive Wes, a victim of her web of lies, has to say it could prompt her to return home. She could feel guilty for leaving Michaela, Connor, Oliver, and who even knows if she's aware that Asher was the informant to deal with the mess that she left behind. Another reason this could be a dream is why would Wes be speaking at Annalise's funeral and why is the picture of Annalise currently now at her age. We also don't have that color tone change that How to Get Away with Murder typically does with their flash forwards. It's very similar to the scene we got in the beginning of the season, which again turned out to be a vision or a dream. Again, because I feel like Wes was one of the biggest victims of Annalise's web of lies, seeing him speak at her funeral in this vision or dream would be the biggest thing to prompt her to return home and help the other students. Now, my opposing argument with this theory is that it would just be a bit of a letdown. I mean, why show us a short clip of Wes just for it to turn out to be a dream? I mean, that's like screenwriting no-no number one. No dream reveals. It'd just be a bit disappointing and then I think a cheap way to keep us hooked while the show is on hiatus. All right, an explanation number two is this Wes is actually future Christopher attending Annalise's real life funeral. Christopher's what, barely a year old? So that would mean this flash forward takes place about 20 to 22 years in the future. And we don't know when exactly this flash forward takes place, so it could be after a long, healthy Annalise life. Christopher could grow up with Annalise in his life, or at least know of her through Laurel. This would make sense why he would want or be speaking at her funeral. Note that the officiant doesn't actually give a name as far as if this is Wes wanting to speak or if this is Christopher wanting to speak. First, we'll begin with a special speaker who has known Annalise for a long time. He would also have known Annalise not as a professor constantly shrouded in murder, but maybe as a strong figure in his life. Or she could be in jail the whole time. Who knows? One major opposing argument here, though, is why on earth would they cast the same actor that portrayed Wes to portray his son's adult form? That would just be lazy and Quite frankly, another cheap way to keep us hooked while the show is on hiatus. Now I get that children can look very similar to their parents, but this would just feel like a marketing scheme to get us talking. Which is working, but still. Even if they had showed us some random male actor preparing to speak at Annalise's supposed funeral, we'd still be curious as to who it was. Having it be Christopher but looking exactly like Wes not only confuses the audience, but would really minimize the shock that occurred at the end of the fall finale. And again, would be a bit of a letdown. All right, now we're driving into crazy conspiracy land. I've collected a lot of hints, clues, and then read a lot of your comments for this one, and it's a lot to put together. But explanation three is that 
Wes Gibbons is still alive. Now we know this is insane, but maybe it's the type of insane that's kinda sorta little tiny bit possible? And the craziest part is Wes being alive has been speculated all the way back since he died in season three. And I say died because it was under such questionable circumstances and there are some gaps. Now I'm gonna look at this theory objectively and cover both sides of it. Is it a stretch? Absolutely. But let's look at the show and some scenes in detail. By the way, if there's anything I missed or get wrong, feel free to call me out. It's not really gonna hurt my feelings. First, let's take a look at how it could be possible. Before Wes died, he was kind of involved in a lot of shady stuff. Meeting with the FBI, possibly accepting that immunity deal, making secretive phone calls. He had connections to Laurel's mother before we even knew about Laurel's mom. Not to mention his ties into Mahoney's considering he was Charles Mahoney's illegitimate son, which I'll get to a little bit later. And then on top of that, the way that his body disappeared and was cremated without anyone's consent. So why would his body need to be disposed of? After the big reveal of who was hashtag under the sheet, that's the last time we actually see Wes's body. And check out the scene here where Sandrine was comforting Laurel after Jorge had taken Christopher away. Wes is going to come home. What? Baby Wes. So is this just a slip of the tongue or was Sandrine promising something a little more to Laurel? Like, you know, Wes's return. Not to mention, like I showed in my Where is Laurel video, this is the last time we saw Sandrine. Show me why I shouldn't kill you right now. Could her answer have been, Wes is still alive and I know where he is? This could have been the start of everything. Getting Sandrine's hair or scalp or whatever sent to the kidding pad in season five could have been Laurel's signal to leave. I still don't think that was actually Sandrine's hair, scalp thing, whatever. And I think Sandrine is still alive. We all saw the reveal that Laurel isn't in witness protection, which she claimed Sandrine was in. Interesting, because we never got confirmation that Sandrine was in witness protection either. Everything points to Laurel being in hiding with Christopher, Sandrine, and quite possibly Wes. Hell, he could have changed his identity via the I am Justine burner phone. Yeah, that's what I'm calling it now, ages before Annalise did. Okay, now the opposing side of this Wes is alive theory. Last time we saw Wes, he was pretty burnt to a crisp. That was insensitive. No, this could have all been prosthetics or maybe even a fake body. I had someone mention in the comment section in my last video that they did something similar in Stranger Things with Mike. When he was supposedly dead, the government used a fake body to convince everyone that he was dead. And spoilers for Stranger Things if you haven't seen it, but you probably should by now. We also have to keep in mind that Wes's body was stored in the morgue lockers. And let's not forget the scene of them performing an autopsy on the body. And it's not like anyone else was in that scene other than the examiner and Wes's body. So this scene was for us, the audience. And I always found it weird because the only purpose it served was to be like, yo, he's dead. This is real. There are consequences. So now it's not real and there are no consequences. It also just seems like a lot to do in order to fake your own death. I say after telling you guys, I believe Annalise says the same thing, but you have the coroner involved, you're bribing a bunch of people in the government, and then you're arranging to have your fake body moved and then cremated. It just seems like a lot of hoops to jump through. On the other hand, if he was potentially working with the government, maybe they arranged all of it, but still. And then what's it for? To come back, take your girlfriend and baby in the hiding, frame your old friends for murder, and then speak at your dead professor's funeral? Which one, let's say, no, let's say the funeral is real. Wouldn't someone there be like, hey, that guy's dead, what's he doing alive? And yes, yes, I knew. It could be fake, it could be witness protection, blah, blah, blah. The government publicly announces that he's alive and they did something similar in Charmed and it was the worst season of Charmed, but also, it was charmed and it's a show about witches. Doing it in How to Get Away with Murder is just a bit of a stretch. But yes, it's possible. But then what are his motives? And then why make this big reveal? And yes, he could have revealed himself earlier and we just haven't seen the scene yet, but we don't have that go on. And then on top of that, according to the coroner, he was strangled first by Dominic, and then he had that rib broken by Connor when he tried to give him CPR or whatever, and then his body was burned in the fire. Again, yes, the coroner could be in on it, but 
that's a lot. Now, aside from that, I did mention that it could have been prosthetics on his face, but let's say they weren't. I paused, rewound, and then paused again, and then looked up pictures online. There is absolutely no scarring on this Wes's face. Okay, so not only did he fake his own death, but then he hired the best makeup artist in the world to make his body appear fake in front of Nate? And maybe Nate's in on him too! Who knows? Maybe Nate knows Wes is alive. This just seems like it's gonna take so much explanation, and for what? To undo Wes's death? Not only is that hard to justify in show, but then that's also saying that any death can be reversible. Did Sam fake his death too? Sinclair? Asher? Rebecca? I bet you Rebecca's right there in the same hideout with Laurel and Christopher and Sandrine. But I digress. Is it possible? Yes. Is it probable? I don't know, but it's worth looking at both sides. And when I speak about motive, that leads me to my final explanation that makes zero sense. But Wes has a twin brother, and either Wes is speaking at Annalise's funeral, and Wes's twin died in the fire, or Wes's twin is speaking at Annalise's funeral and everyone thinks it's Wes and that Wes faked his death. All right, so hear me out. We know that Wes's mother was sexually assaulted by Charles Mahoney and it resulted in getting pregnant with Wes, or Kristoff. Speaking of which, Kristoff's name was changed to Wes, and correct me if I'm wrong, when he was put into foster care to help him cope with everything and the changes and all that, so they changed his name too. What if there's more to that though? Wes and Kristoff could be brothers, or there could just be another brother out there in general. Wes's mother could have not been able to care for twins and then been forced to give one up for adoption. That would give us motive. This twin could be out for revenge against the woman and people responsible for this brother's death. It could even go as far as this West twin teaming up with Gabriel to find out the truth and then clearing Wes's name. Or let's backtrack, perhaps Wes never died, and the Wes that died in the fire was Wes' twin. That's why he needed to dispose of the body, because he needed to get rid of the dental records. So the death is real, the autopsy is real, but it just wasn't Wes on that medical slab. It was Wes' twin, which explains the lack of scarring. Still though, Wes completely alive and then showing up at Annalise's funeral in all his glory to speak is going to turn a couple heads. And then why was Wes' twin in Annalise's basement? Then why would Wes want his twin brother killed? You'd think he'd want to get to know him if that was the case. Then we also did see the scene of Wes going into the fire, and it's not like that wasn't Wes, because we definitely know it was Wes. But again, that would give us explanation as to why Wes' twin would want to avenge the death of Wes and would blame Annalise and the students. I feel like this is spiraling. Anyway, so those are the main theories that I could come up with from the own thoughts in my head, what I've read, and then what you've left in the comment section in my last video. Let me know what you think is going on with this whole West thing and all whatever else since we're going to be waiting until April 2nd anyway. And are there some definitive details that you think just completely shut down and close this case? Comment below and then take a look at my top three favorite or most interesting comments from my last video. Seamless segue! Alright, so on that last video, you guys left the most comments I've ever had on any one video. So as a result, because there are so many good theories and I don't want any left out, I'm still going to refer to that video and just pull the theories that are the same topic as the video I'm covering. So, for example, these are going to be West ones. The first one is from Kniss Donner. I hope I pronounced that right. This one says Tegan helped Laurel disappear with Wes and her mother. Wes faked his death with the help of Dominic and Estate. Wes is also working for the state, which is why they cremated, cremated his body. Again, this ties into the first theory that Wes faked his death and is involved with the government. I do like the inclusion of Dominic here because we know Frank killed Dominic. Maybe that can tie into how Connor saw a dead body there because Dominic was in on it and didn't actually kill Wes. This next one is by Angie Free and I included it because it says Wes is dead and his twin shows up at the funeral and there's at least one other person that believes in the crazy theory I had about the twin. And then this last one is by Brandy Anderson. And I'll be completely honest, I chose this one because I just thought it was hilarious. I knew Wes was alive since they said they lost his body. None of y'all read Romeo and Juliet, the poison that made you seem dead, but not? Really? No one? Okay. What can I say? It's the little things that make me laugh. 
All right, thank you so much for watching and then joining me on this crazy how to get away with murder conspiracy train. As I said in my last video, I'm completely open for any ideas for upcoming videos. I've gotten some good requests, some really good topics and more, but keep it coming. I wanna put out the content you want and the content you think I'll enjoy doing. And while you're here, feel free to take a look at some of my other videos. Yeah. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. It really helps me out. Then subscribe, hit that notification bell. Until next time, shine on your crazy diamonds.